welcome to alpha beta tutorials in this video i'm going to explain how to plot a graph in physics practical and find a slope especially when the values are decimal without wasting time let's go straight to the point let's assume we've conducted a physics practical and obtained this data and we are required to plot a graph with k on the vertical axis and t on the horizontal axis the values of k are decimals and the values of t are also decimals and it is difficult to plot decimals directly onto a graph and so we have to go through the following steps to make it very simple we are going to plot a graph with k on the vertical axis and t on the horizontal axis so we need the values of k k has no unit because because sine i has no unit and sine r has no unit so when we add the two no unit for them C has no unit because M is in centimeters, L is also in centimeters. So when we divide, they cancel out, the units cancel out. So for the plotted values, we need the values of K. The values are all decimals and it will be very difficult to plot decimals on the graph accurately so we convert them to standard form we move this point twice to the right so we have 71 times 10 is going to negative 2 that's standard form and we move this point to twice to the right so we have 94 when we move we move this point 1 2 and we have 118 the next one is 136 the next one is 151 all times 10 is going to negative 2 for the values of t we move this point twice 1 2 and we have 30 times 10 is going to negative 2 the next value will be 37 the next one 47 the next one 54 the next one 60 all times 10 is when negative 2 so the values are now in standard form and they can be easily plotted on the graph so we draw the vertical and horizontal axis We are going to plot k on the vertical axis and t on the horizontal axis so we choose a scale for the values looking at the values a scale of 2 centimeters to 20 times 10 to my negative 2 on the k axis will be okay so we start from 0 here 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and so on. For the T axis, we choose a scale of 2 centimeters to 10 times 10 as my negative 2. So from 0, we move to 10, 20, 30. 40 and so on for the first value we have 71 on the k axis and 30 on the t axis for the k axis one full box is 20 when we divide by 10 one small box will be 2 
on the T axis, one full box is 10. When we divide it by 10, one small box on the T axis will be 1. So this should guide us to plot the values. One small box on the vertical axis is 2, and one small box on the horizontal axis is 1. So for 71, between 60 and 80, we have 70 at the middle. And 71 will move to the next box, between the next box. And for the T, we have 30. So we put a point here. For the next point, we have 94 and 37. This is 30, we count 7 boxes. And for 94, between 80 and 100, we have 90. And for 4, we move 2 boxes. So we put a point here. So the next one, we have 47 and 118. So this is 40. We count 7 boxes. And for 118, this is 100. And 118 will be somewhere around this point. Thus, we count 9 boxes, since each box is 2. The next one, 54. This is 50. We count 4 more boxes for 54. And for 136, this is 130. And we move 3 more boxes for 6. So we have the point around this place. And the next one is 60. This is 60 on the T axis. 151 on the K axis. This is 150. That's the middle of 140 and 160. So for 151, we'll move into the next box for the 1. And we draw the line of best fit, passing through as many points as possible. We are going to determine the slope S of the graph. So for the slope, we draw a horizontal and a vertical line like this. We name here A, here B, and then C. The slope is given by change in BC over change in AB. So for change in BC, we have one fifty minus ninety. Remember times ten exponent negative two. And for change in A B we have sixty minus This falls on, I think, 36. Remember, times 10 is going to negative 2. So times 10 is going to negative 2 will cancel out. And 150 minus 90 is 60. And 60 minus 36 is 24. So we divide 60 by 24 and we have 2.5 as our slope. Let's try this example too. We are going to plot a graph with V inverse on the vertical axis and R on the horizontal axis. But the values of V inverse are all decimals and the values of R are all whole numbers. Let's see how we can plot this on the graph and find the slope. So we need the values of V inverse. 
it will be difficult to plot 1.64 on the graph so we convert it to standard form by moving the point 1 2 to the right so we have 164 times 10 exponent negative 2 and the unit is per root that's standard form so we move this point to 1 2 and we have 132 this one will be 116 this is 101 this will be 68 and this is 53 all times 10 exponent negative 2 per volt and we also need the values of r for the values of r they are whole numbers so we can easily plot them so we don't convert them to standard form so the, for the values of r we have 8 6, 5, 4, 2, and 1. So we are going to plot these values on the graph. So we draw a vertical and horizontal axis. So we are going to plot a graph of V inverse times 10 is going to negative 2 per volt on the vertical axis and then R ohms on the horizontal axis. We have to choose a scale. We are going to choose a scale of 2 centimeters to 20 times 10 is going to negative 2 volts on the V inverse axis. So we start from 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, and so on. And on the R axis, we choose a scale of 2 centimeters to 1 ohm. So from 0, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so on. On the vertical axis, one big box is 20. So 20 divided by 10 is 2. So each small box is 2 on the vertical axis. And on the horizontal axis, one big box is 1. When we divide 1 by 10, each small box on the horizontal axis is going to be 0 0.1 so this should guide us to plot the graph the first point we have 164 on the vertical axis this is 160 one box is two so 162 164 we count two more boxes and we have eight on our axis so eight here and 164 will be here the next one is we have 6 on the R axis and 132 on V inverse axis. This is 130 in between 120 and 140. So for 132, we move one more box and we have the point here. The next one, 5 on R axis and 116. This is 100 on the vertical axis. The middle is 110. So 116 means we have to move three more boxes up for the six. The next one is four and one zero one. So this is four, this is 100. When we move one box, it will be 102. So we put it in the middle of the next box here. The next one is 2 and 68. This is 2. This is 60. We count four more boxes since one box is 2. So we have the point here. The last one is 1 on the R axis and 53 
on the vertical axis. So this is 50. The next box will be 52, and we put it in the middle of the next box like this. So we draw a line of best fit. We are going to determine the slope of the graph. So we draw a horizontal and a vertical line, name here A, B, and C. The slope is given by change in BC divided by change in AB. For change in BC, we have one fifty minus eighty. Remember times ten is my negative two per volts. And for change in AB, we have seven over here minus this is 2.8 the unit over here is ohms so 150 minus 80 will give us 70 Remember times 10 is going to negative 2 per volt. 7 minus 2.8 is 4.2 ohms. And 70 times 10 is going to negative 2 is 0 0.7 per volt. Divided by the 4.2 ohms. 0 0.7 divided by 4.2 will give us 0 0.17 to two decimal places and the numerator we have per volts and the denominator is ohms so the reciprocal will be per ohms so this is our slope We are going to determine the intercept C on the vertical axis. So this line of best fit cuts the vertical axis over here. This is 20, this is 30, 32, 34, 35. So the intercept is 35. Remember times 10 is going to negative 2 per volts. And 35 times 10 is going to negative 2 is 0 0.35 per volts. So this is the intercept on the vertical axis.